Hola guys and girls and welcome to GBA Week 8 versus the New Alliance Pelipers coached by none other than my good friend John, aka Pokemon. And before we go into the whole team preview thing, of course the usual shoutouts at the beginning of the match. First of all, shoutout to Potato Jim, shoutout with uh, the German SCH of course, <laughs> for recording this match for me. Like most of you know already, I do not have a capture card, so I have to rely on friends like Jim for recording this match for me. He's of course kind enough to do that so far throughout the whole season, so definitely give him a look. Links to his stuff it is, is in the description. The PPL did start now, actually, so you can hit, hit him up for some cool league content. Then to the Jenna here, right, uh, right here, I actually have to shout out three people, not only one, because I had some uh, mind changing in, in between team building. So first of all, shout out to Burke for joining the whole initial team. Link to his stuff is in the description. Um, then I have to shout out Redithin for joining me this Ladias. Before that, it didn't have the Tanga Barry in a different spell, but then I changed my mind and I had to find a Jenna. And Redithin was kind enough to do that. Links to his stuff will be in the description as well. And of course, last but definitely not least, shout out to Greg. One of the GBA fan Discord admins for joining me the Celebi. Before this whole, uh, all this, all those whole thing, I did not have a Celebi on the team. I had uh, Magi uh, not Magiana, Prime Marina before that there, but then I decided for Celebi because it's a more safer option. And yeah, Greg was kind enough to gen that for me. So now for the whole history of the match, we are of course three and four currently getting from coming from a tough loss versus Duncan last week. John going into this match 5-2, and two, so he's going very hot so far, being very on point with his team building and his match is firing in two, of course. But other than that, he is going very strong so far. But yeah, we all know John, we already faced him back in Season 5, I think it was, where I, there I was able to beat him. So we have some history where I was able to beat him, so it's not like the record stands for everything. And we're definitely going in this match to win once again, because like I said, the playoff race in our conference is so tight. It's so tight. We have Dan, we have Gator, we have... Um, we have Dan, Gator, then we have Duncan who got in with our win with us, then we got George. And then Chip and Mono kind of out, they're most likely getting in playoffs, like they're getting very strong right now, but all of those four people still have a shot at getting this, uh, the last two playoff spots, and everyone is fighting for that, so yeah, we have to get every win we can, especially going into the last few weeks, because there are not much opportunities to get any wins. Nice drink. So now going into the team preview. If you want to know more, about, more in detail about my team, definitely check out the team builder I uploaded yesterday. Link to that will be in the description, so you can check that out. There I go more in detail about what my mods are, why this spread, why this moves, what are his threats, what is my preparation for that, what is my game plan, all this good stuff. Very much detail. I go all of that in my team builder, so you can check that out. But for all which do not care enough, I will very very quick rundown over my over my team. We got a physically defensive Rotom Heat, we got a Choice Bandit Adamant Lucario, we got a speed boosting Life of Neo Lego, then we got special defensive Celebi, a physically defensive Magiana, and a Tango Barry Ladias. Looking at John's team, he brought the Uxie, the Skullpeak, the Melodic, the Infernape, the Skarmory, the Gudra, and no Bulu! No Bulu, guys! He did not brought the Bulu, the number one threat he had on his team. I have no idea why. I'm just happy there was no Bulu because I brought physically defensive Magiana just for Bulu because the only thing that can take actually two hits from a choice banded Bulu, I think else gets two hit KO. So this is a huge, huge burden gone from my heart not seeing Bulu. Of course, I did prepare for it mainly with Magiana, but I prefer not seeing Bulu and just having my Magiana still around for other months of his. But yeah, no Bulu. Woo! Yes, I was I, like, I was so happy when I saw that there was no Budo. I have no idea why he decided to do that. You probably, you will probably see the explanation in his video. You can check out this link to John's channel, of course, in description as well. So you can see this reasoning. I do not know that yet, but very glad to not see that. Then, of course, the other, like top, the top two and top three threat are still there: the Scolopede and the Infernape. Scolopede basically only needing Mega Horn, Poison Jab. Earthquake and Aqua Tail to sweep through my team once everything is weakened, and then um, Inferno, which could be Scarf, could be Z Captain, could be. Uh, there's a variety of movesets. He could be physical, he could be special. I need to do a lot of scouting around the Inferno to know how I can handle that the best. Then the, uh, the Fist Death backbone of his team, he brought Melodic and Skarmory both. I was only expecting one of them, but he just actually decided to bring both. So, what I said in Team Builder first is if he brings Skarmory and Melodic, then I think Skarmory Fist Death and Melodic more speci specially defense. But he brought the Gudra as well, with, which, which is loosely, usually in all his matches was Assault Death and its special defensively backbone of the team. So, I don't think he would like be that special defensive with Melodic and Gudra. So, maybe it's an offensive Gudra, Choice Backs, something like that. I don't know really. I have thought around of Gudra as well. And then he brought the Yuxi. The UC was one of the wild cards six months I mentioned in my team builder, so not too surprised to see that. The only big surprise was not seeing Bulu basically. 
And we would have brought maybe not Skarmory or not Melodic and Budo instead, then it would have been on point with my team prediction. But yeah, I'm very happy to not be on point this time. <laughs> but yeah, looking at this team, I decided to lead with my uh, Rotom. First of all, he didn't have Jolteon, so I can vote with 3 on his team. And I beat everything on his team 1v1, or I have a very good matchup with everything barring the Gudra. The Uxie I can Toxic right away because I need to wear that down for my Lucario. The Skullopy I can just overheat. The Melodic I can Toxic as well before he gets his Flame Up, or potentially Volt Switch on then. Uh, but I would probably go for Toxic because I, I don't... Oh, I would go for Volt Switch because I still... I would go for Volt Switch, predicting the Skull because I still need my Rotom Rod and I can just go to my Celebi. Then we got the Infernip, which my thing is mainly there for. If he goes for you, should I get Frick Helm damage on him and I can just get Volt Switch damage, bringing him in range of a choice when extreme shield for my Lucario. Um, Skarmy just gets wrecked by both my stabs, so Lucario would be the best match. I mean, then Gudra, of course, which does wall me. I could Toxic that, but there's no way I would risk my Rotom taking a maybe potential Muddy Water or a Draco or something like that. So yeah, buying Gudra, I have a great matchup with everything. I just Volt Switch out and all this good stuff. Only with Gudra, I would have to hard switch. So I decided to leave my Rotom. And let's see what John decides to lead with. I'm sorry, I'm drinking a bit more often this time. I did try to record this match already and got like 15 minutes in, but then I had to start over. So yeah, my my voice is a bit it's it's a bit uh, worn out already. <laughs> But yeah, he decides to go lead with his uh, Yuxi, and like you probably, uh, like I saw, like I said in the beginning, I will just talk to this thing, trying to wear this thing down with my uh, Lucario. And one important thing to notice right here, he goes for Nurkov, so smart play on his part, because I brought Rekka Helmet a lot of times on my Rotom. But what you notice right here is that his Yuxi is actually faster than me. I did speed creep my Rotom, that it outspeeds a no speed Yuxi. So this has a little bit of speed investment to not get spat trapped. And with this knockoff, I know that he's a physical Yuxi because that was a, n a neutral attack nature, so he's probably minus uh, attack nature. So he's not a mixed Yuxi or something like that. I don't know if he has psychics, only if he has headbutts. But one good thing that which comes out of him being fast is that I get now a slow volt switch off and actually get the momentum in my favor. So in the end, it works actually out in my favor that he is faster than me because now he goes for U turn, gets like no damage at all on me, and I can go for volt switch. He as well getting no damage at all on Scudra, but the most important thing, me grabbing the momentum versus him. So because Knight here, I can go into my Lucario and right from the start drop the close combat hammer on his team. He has no switches. The only switch in here he has to this thing is the uh, uh, Scolipede, which only takes it around 30%. But yeah, he switches out, goes to this Skarmory, which like, you know how physical bulky Skarmory is, right? You know how bulky is, like 140 cents, it's known for, oh, you physical bulk. No, 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 not a switch. <laughs> not a switch, and I do over 50% of this with my close combat. And yeah, he gets left O's back, but he's still very easily in range of another close combat. So, right here, the obvious play would be just going for a close combat and 2 it KOing this thing, but from this damage, he knows that I'm choice banded. Uh, John is, of course, a smart player, he calculates damage, same as I do, to. Um, find out about threats and sets and all this good stuff, and now he knows that I'm trying to spend it, he knows that I'm locked into close combat. And what I do not want to do is grant him a quote-unquote free switch into a skull of only taking 30%, and then him being able to fire off a big hit versus my team, knowing that I would most, most likely switch out, he doesn't even have to go for Earthquake, he could go for Aquatame, picking my Rotom, go for Mega Horn, picking my Ladias, all this good stuff. Basically, I, I'm in the world of hurt if skull of gets a free switch in. Do not have the best switches to that. I only have my Lure and my Magiana, which now that uh, Budo is gone, is going to be my best check to the Skull Beat as well. Like I said, huge threat to my team. So what I'm going to do, predicting the Skull Beat to come in, I'm actually going to double out, or not double out, switch out into my uh, Rotom Heat. Because even if he stays in and goes for like Brave Bird or something like that, I still have my great matchup in my favor. And in case he does switch out on the Skull Beat, I have a great matchup as well. But yeah, he was willing to just sack his uh, Skarmory, so I should have gone for close combat. But was not feeling that. But one annoying thing that is, I just go for overheat, predicting to stay in because he has sturdy up, is that uh, he will be able to get up rocks right here. So if it was just go for safe close combat, he would not have been able to get up rocks, which would have been very nice for my Rotom. But it's not too bad, I still have my hazard remover in on the team, of course, in my Ladia. So. Hit no rocks. Right now I can just fire off Volt Switch, either killing this Skarmory or getting momentum on the Switch. So basically a no drawback play. So I will just click that button, John decides to switch out right here. So most likely the Gudra, so I can get more chip on that. Slime Shady, yes, that is the, that is the Gudra. Get some more chip damage on that, and I get another switch into the monster, which is called Cool Doggo, the Lucario, and I can basically drop another close combat, and something on his team dies. Something, firing Skullopeed, something dies. Other than I predict, like, predict Skullopeed, go for Extreme Speed or something like that, which I most likely won't do. So I just go for close combat right here because, like I said, he has no good switches to this thing. No good switches. I don't. He did not switch in Skullopeed last time, so I don't know. I don't think he will do it right here. But yeah, John does a smart thing. Sacking the uh, Skarmory, basically the only reason he kept it alive was for a sack for my Lucario. 
At least I'm assuming it. I don't think he had enough plan for for this uh, Skarmory versus my team with uh, that low amount of HP. But yeah, now he can decide to go into his uh, Infernape. Even though rocks are up and my um, Sk uh, my Rotom is a bit hurt, doesn't have the Rocky Helmet anymore, it's still the best switch into a thing I have to scout out what is what a, what a set is, what a spread is, and all this good stuff. He shows right here that he goes for U-turn. And from that damage, I can tell that he has a max attack jolly nature, or at least not attack boosting nature. And he did not show any items, so he's not choice banded, I know that as well. And he's not life orb. So very nice knowledge right here. He is maybe mixed, but mainly physical. And he has U-turn, which was not really surprised. But yeah, right here, I switch out into my, um, my Jena, because that can take anything, any hit from this thing, barring an earthquake. But I do not think he would go for earthquake right away here. I did not show what, what, what kind of my Magiana is. So I do not think he would try to break my Magellan drop and seeing that it's physically defensive. That's more of a surprise on my part. He goes for Aqua Tail, but I predict it as, his, uh, as one of his moves, of course. Hits Stunfan, hits Rotom, very nice coverage. He is Life Orb, and from the damage I can tell that he is Jolly Life Orb. So the lure on my Ladias can potentially come and clash with this thing. But yeah, he switched out into it with his Skull Repeat, I can go for Volt Switch, just grabbing momentum on this thing, or getting him at least in range of an Extreme Speed from my Lucario. They don't expect him to stay in right here, and Flash Cannon uh, did, could not kill him from this range uh, as well, so there was no reason to really stay in. If he would have stayed in, I would have predicted the Earthquake could go back into Rotom, get more life of damage on him with another hit and stuff like that. But yeah, I go to my Rotom right here, I get very low with uh, Spellfrog right here, but because this thing is faster than me, I want to bait him to go for an attack versus me, so I can get a Pain Split up, get one a lot of damage on this Uxie, and a lot of health back on my Rotom, because if I get rid of Rocks, then my Rotom is around at 50% after this pain splitting is still a check to the Infernape. And I still need to know more about Infernape. Just seeing that it's mainly physical and has u is not enough right here. But yeah, I get the pain split off. That Zen Headbutt had no chance of killing me, so that wasn't even a roll. In case you're wondering, barring he was like more physical attack investment than I imagined, but the knockoff damage was telling me that he was not. So, right now... Meh. A lot of things are going according to plan right here. Duxi very worn down, it's toxic, the, uh, the Skarmory is already gone, I got a decent amount of damage on the uh, Skull Repeat for Life Orb, I know what the Inferno is. Next to the game match, it's going very well in my favor. Everything is going according to plan, barring that rocks up. So, so that is why I got very comfortable right here and I got to make a very greedy play. I make a very greedy play, I switch out fr from my um, from my Rotom right here. Don't even go for Volt Switch because I do not want more damage on he me. What I want right here is getting rid of the rocks. So what I'm gonna do right here is gonna hard switch into my uh, Ladias Britain as an headbutt and trying to get my Defog off. And like you can see here, that is not gonna quite work out because the Uxie does go for the U-turn. And I get rid of a Tanga Berry. And now I will pause again to talk more about this play. Um, he goes for U-turn, does like no damage at all, and he can switch out and switch out into his Skullipede, like we will see later. There you go, there's the Skullipede. And I pause it again, come on, boom. That was a very terrible play. <laughs> no surprise, like, that was a very, I got way too greedy and way too comfortable right here. Not only, not only did I grab, get, get, gave him momentum from the U-turn, I got rid of a Tanga Barry on my Ladius as well. That was a two, two, basically two birds with one stone, but Instead of a bird, it hits my face. It was two stones in my face, this play. And I made it myself. Basically, I, I picked the stones up myself and smashed them in my face. But this, this play, that was... Ugh. I thought he would just go with a headbutt trying to wear down my Rotom. Basically bring him in range of rocks to die and stuff like that. But that was an unnecessary play. I could have just gone for Volt Switch. Just gone for Volt Switch. I would have had the momentum. And... I, it would have been so great. I would have been in such a good position if I would have gone for Volt Switch here. But I got way too greedy and I go to my Ladias and that's... Uh, that hurt to see. That hurt to see. So yeah, now he goes into his skull repeat, and now I still like I could can't get the defog off right here, and I still have to sack my Rotom. So instead of instead of having a low health Rotom and the momentum, I now have a dead Rotom, and uh, basically I have to get get have a dead uh, dead Rotom to get momentum, and I got rid of a Tiger Barry as well on my Ladios. So very very bad play on my part. Right here, I go sw do switch out into my Magiana. I did not switch into Magiana versus uh, the Skullipede, by the way, right there, because if he goes for Earthquake, he now saw that Magiana is my switch into Skullipede. And if he goes for Earthquake once, it two kills me, and then Skullipede runs through my team. Especially now that Tango Berry on my Ladius is gone. So I have to keep my Magiana at a good amount of health to still have a check and to the um, Skullipede till, it's, till it is in range of an extreme speed. Then my Lucario can do this. But yeah, I go for Flash Cannon right here. 
because I want to switch it up, not go for Volt Switch again. And he brings in the Yuxi, and right here I switch out once again because I do not want to take a knockoff from this thing. I still want to take, I have the leftovers recovery on my Magiana. So I'm gonna hard switch right here into my Ladias because I already got rid of my item through this bad play with the switching in La uh, Ladias into this um, Yuxi. This time it's a decent play switching in Ladias into this Yuxi because with a knockoff won't do much, and I can kill this thing off with a Psychic or Thunderbolt at anything basically. But like I can see, he does not go for knockoff, actually he goes for the, okay, rocks damage, he goes for the fire punch. So it was even a, I mean, I don't want to tap myself, after this Duke's play, I don't want to tap myself too much on the back. But that was a smart smart way to not stay in, in taking the knockoff. Um, he actually went for fire punch, it would have brought me definitely in range of the earthquake from the skull feed. So glad I did not take this damage. He goes for Toxic, lives on his level of health, I get burn damage of course, and I will pause it here again. Because you know, you know what? You know what, you know this bad play which I made with uh, Ladias with Yuxi? How about, how about, like, what do you think? How about I do another one, huh? Do you think that would be a smart idea? Definitely not, but past last had a different plan it seems. I do stay in right here, which is of course a smart one, but I do not kill this Yuxi off, I go here for recover. Why? Because past last thought that he would John would just go for knockoff, getting a lot of damage, uh, the most damage possible on my Ladias, and sacking the Yuxi. But past last was an idiot, not thinking that John would go for U-turn, so I go for a recover right here. The Yuxi is still around, and he gets a free switch or something. And I, like, I don't know. Is it? it it's Yuxi a curse for me? Luxi Ladias. I past last was an idiot. These two plays made no. Well, I mean, they kind of made sense. Like there was this, in some universe they played out, but in definitely most of them they don't. So yeah, <laughs> he goes into this uh, skull repeat, and uh, I have to sack something. Uh, I have to like. If it would have just gone for Thunderbolt, Yuxi would have been gone, and he would have still gone into, uh, into Scolopede. So the same, it would have happened, the same would have happened right here. Barring one point that the Yuxi would have been dead and not around anymore. This recover didn't make any sense, but... Uh, it's, it's, uh, God damn it. I have to narrate over it. Uh, like, after I knew I had to narrate over it, and now that I'm doing it, I definitely do not enjoy it. But yeah, because important that Yuxi still around comes into play right here. Because now I do just go for World Switch, trying to grab the momentum. But because John has the Yuxi still left, he can sack that off. And instead of me getting momentum, it's gonna be John getting momentum. So yeah, not only, like basically the thing which, the, this recover basically gave John momentum. That's, it, in the end result, it gave John momentum instead of me getting, getting the momentum. So very, very bad play on my part. I will, I will accept any, um, any criticism in the comments ar around these two plays. But only these two plays, not any more. <laughs> but yeah, I go into my near Lego right here because I want to see what his switch is. This is most likely the Gudra and then I have a good switch in, into my uh, Celebi. But he goes actually into his, uh, into his, um, uh, what's called, Milotic. And I was very surprised by that, because now, what I now can do is can, I can get up my rocks. And what rocks do is, one, chip down on the Inferno if you get in a range of Extreme Speed, and two, guaranteed, bring the uh, Scaldipede in range of Extreme Speed, because after one rock switch and it is in range, and he has no Hazard Remover anymore, the Skarmory is dead. And I can take any hit from this uh, melodic. I don't care. Like I'm, I'm you know, Lego is very fit, especially bulky. Even Scald is super effective. It's not doing over fifty percent to me. So and after that, I can still fire over Thunderbolt with this thing potentially. But yeah, I get my rocks right here. Uh, like I was predicting him to be like special defensive and go for Scald right here. But actually, what John does is he goes for the recover. So what he actually wants to, wanted to do right here was getting his flame up up most likely for my Lucario I assume because his Gamry was dead and with the flame up he can take maybe to close combat or at least he thinks so. So yeah, now I just find a fire off a Thunderbolt trying to get a lot of damage on the uh, Melodic because seeing the flame up he's most likely uh, physically defensive and uh, like I said I'm, I'm still not in range to die from a skull. So he makes a smart play going into his uh, Gudra, so that play was really just to get his flame up, but at least I got rocks in exchange, so at least something worked for me out this time. Nice. So now I can go into my uh, Celebi, like I already said, this thing is built to take on this Gudra. I have no troubles wanting, wanting that if I get a Toxic on this thing, he can't do it KO me with any move. And like, Hidden Power Bug, potentially he could, but I don't really think he would throw Hidden Power Bug, he probably has like Fire Blast or Flamethrower. So, now I make another weird play, I might say, you might say, so which I'm gonna pause it to explain it. Um, from this damage, from this muddy water damage on my Celebi, he should know that I'm a special defensive Celebi. Or I, like, I'm pretty close to my max special defensive, so it's pretty easy to cast that I'm a special defensive Celebi. And that should tell him that he can't beat me 1v1 if he's a special Gudra, because he has shown now muddy water, so I definitely know that he's a special Gudra. If he would've gone for Earthquake or Mania Lego, Celebi was still the best switch in, I'd still know that he's physical. But now I know from his muddy water damage, he is max special attack modest. So it's, it's exactly the Gudra I was uh, expecting. 
So that's why I'm going to go here for the U-turn because I do not want to grant. With the moves that I have, is U-turn, Giga Drain, Toxic, and Recover. That means I can't touch this Golda Peep. And I do not, and I basically can't touch the uh, Infernape as well. And I, if he predicts me to go for like Toxic or something like that, or Call Mind and goes to something like this, I do not, I cannot, I do not want to give this monster free switches. So that's why I'm actually going to go for U-turn right here, predicting him to switch out, even though this is the one to take on Guta. But yeah, John, I. I don't know if he didn't calc or he just wants to say Kudra, but he decides to stay in right here and yeah, knowing that he now will definitely go for the fire move, I can still go into my near Lego. So it didn't really, this old mission didn't really hurt too much, barring the part that I get uh, rocks and flamethrower damage on my near Lego, which basically doesn't matter because near Lego is so frail, barring this is Kudra, it dies to anything. But yeah, right now I just switch back out into my cell to be predicting the muddy water. If even if he predicts me and goes for the um, flamethrower, that won't be able to turn me from this range because he has the flamethrower and not the fire blast. That's a very important thing to notice as well. But yeah, John just attacks with the front of him, goes for another Muddy Water. And yeah, now we are once again Celebi versus uh, Gudra. And now seeing that he just stays in with his Gudra repeatedly, I will fire off a Toxic right here. Basically fulfilling the plan Celebi had from the start that is one v this Gudra with Toxic Recover. And I do, do go for the Toxic right here and now the Recover Stall begins. Um, spoilers, um, this will go for some turns so I can use this chance to talk about something else. You may get a lot of damage with this flamethrower versus me, but that is because that is a crit, like you can see right here. A standard flamethrower does like only 30 to 40% to me, so I can easily recall that off with my lefties and recover. So unless he gets like three crits in a row, he won't be able to defeat me 1v1 with this Gudra. So, now go into the late game. Uh, this one he has left is the Gudra, the Milonic, the Infernape and the Scolopede. The Infernape being most likely Scarfed, I can't be too sure about that. But uh, basically because I'm assuming so far that the Infernape is Scarfed, he was very much playing it like it's Scarfed. And like I said, he is strong in nature, no boosting attack in nature. I'm assuming it is Scarfed most likely. So for my win condition, it's in my mind, I decided right here to make Lucario my win condition. Not near Lego, because near Lego, if he is Scarfed Infernape, needs two speed boosts to outspeed the Infernape. And that is definitely not happening. Not, I don't see that. If I can get one speed boost very easily, I think, versus some of his monsters. Uh, not for the skull, he just kills me, but versus the scooter, for example. If I switch out in the right turn on the flame throw, I can just go into my. Could go into my knee Lego, getting a speed boost. But then he can just. Uh, that probably is smart play. Why did I think about that? But yeah, I should have gone to probably into near Lego at some point and get a speed boost. But yeah, so that's why Lucario is going to be a win condition. That comes to play later. So, right here, this is the turn. The uh, It's very close to dying to Toxic, so I go for a next recover. I'm at full health actually, so this next flamethrower will do around 30%. And then with leftovers, it will be at around uh, 75 to 80% of health. But he gets a crit! And that is very annoying because I want to be a good amount of health because for something that comes later I can explain that. But right here I just think don't die to Toxic, give me another recover, give me another recover, come on Guja! Damn it, he died. <laughs> so yeah, right now I have a Celebi at 50% instead of uh, around 75. And that means he can bring out his Inferno and that means one important thing. That means that he can go for a U-turn right here to kill me and otherwise he would have been forced to go for a fire move basically to kill me. Uh, if he would have got, if I would have been at, seven, at, at this amount of health, I could have just gone for recover, predicting him either, either uh, uh, predicting him to. Uh, oh wait, no, I wouldn't have gone for recover, uh, forcing basically to go for the fire move to kill me because uh, U-turn wouldn't been able to do the trick. But now that I know he can go for a U-turn and kill me off, I have to switch out into my near Lego because, like I said, near Lego is not looking my wing condition anymore. And if he would have been forced to go for the fire move, one thing I would have, I would have gotten some recoil in him with the flare blitz. And now the thing is that of course Fancy I would have been able to take the hit. And if he switched up moves, I know that he's not choice guard. But because of that hell of that uh, crit, he is able to just go for U-turn and I still do not know anything about this Inferno, barring that it has U-turn and that it's Max Tech Jolly Nature. <laughs> but that's the only thing I know about this Inferno. Without this crit, I would have gotten at least some information about it. Another move. Seeing if he switch up moves, but yeah, I just sack my Lego right here versus Golapete because, like I said, I can't allow my Magena to switch in on Earthquake. And like here, you can see he does indeed have the Earthquake, so no protect on his part. Def so it was the set I was predicting. So I can now go into my Magena and just fire off another Volt Switch. Oh, no, wait, no, I don't get into Magena right here. I do go into my Lucario right here, uh, picking it off with an extreme speed. I had in mind, like, I could predict. I, I thought about it quite a while. I could predict the Milotic right here, go for close combat, tweet ko that on the switch in, but there's no way that I should take this risk. Here I was, like, before that was Yuxi, I was dumb last, but right, right here I was smart last. There. If I would've gone for close combat and he stays in, my Lucario dies, and then it's basically GG, because Lucario is my win con right now. Nielego is gone. 
Lucario is my win con. I have to win with Lucario. It defeat it can beat the Skullpeed from now on 1v1, and if I get some more chip on the third up, I can beat that and Potentially, if I can switch up moves, I can beat the uh, Malolik either way, but I still have a Celebi around. That's why I kept it around, because that's my safest way to beat the um, Malolik 1v1. Because if I go, this, uh, if I get my Lucario uh, in on Malolik, then I would have to go for two close combats to kill him, and so that means he has one chance to get a Skull Burn. And if he does get that burn, I can't beat the Malolik 1v1. He can't just recover Storm and me getting burn damage on me. So the safest way to beat the Malolik is with my uh, Celebi. So I definitely want to keep that around. But yeah, like I said, I just go for the safe extreme speed right here, not over predicting, because that, that no way I should take this risk. He does go into Malolik, gets some rocks damage on him. I get some extreme damage on him, and after his extreme, extreme speed damage, that definitely tells me, yeah, that does nothing. That is a, a close, a, it could be uh, a, most likely max fist with, with the Marvel scale, but it could be a bit less and has some special tech investment, like uh, some EVs, I don't know really. But yeah, I can uh, switch out into my Celebi right here, because that thing only wants the, uh, um, the Milotic e uh, for days. Even if he goes for Ice Beam right here, I would have been able to take the hit, but he predicts that, of course, very obvious switching goes into Skolopi, but that is a very nice switching as well, because now he dies to uh, two um, Life of Hits. So right here, there's no way he's not going for the Mega Horn, trying to pick off my Celebi, so I can predict right here that and go into my Magiana. And after that, he has only one Life of Hit left, and even if he goes to Earthquake, I can just predict that with my... I can just stay in with my Magiana, basically. Taking the Earthquake and him dying to his own life orb. I could have switched out into my uh, Celebi right here, potentially making the Earthquake, but like I said, I'm playing very safe right here because of a very clear way of winning this game. Um, if I would have gone to Celebi on the Earthquake, he would have died as well, and I would have more health on my Ricicle, but if he goes for Megaron on the Switch, I lose my uh, Celebi, and taking down the, um, uh, the uh, what you call it, the Milotic is going to be a very difficult, uh, not really a difficult task, but there is a chance I won't be able to do that. So there's no way I risk that. Especially since I'm guaranteed to lift that fine with a crit. And like I can see, I can lift that decently comfortable. And so he does indeed die to his own life up. And I will get, even though my attack fails, I will get my uh, solar boost right here. So, now he only has his Milotic and his uh, uh, Infernape left. I do not know no I do not know anything about the Infernape yet. Barring that it's uh, speed, uh, plus speed nature, max attack, U-turn. But the Milotic, I do know that it's physically defensive. So, going into the late game right now, if he goes into the um, Infernape, he has a chance, uh, he, could, he would have to lock himself into Flare Blitz, and then after he gets some recurl on him, I can uh, I can basically win the game right here, because uh, U-Turn won't be able to kill my uh, Magiana, um, he would have to go for a fire move or go for Earthquake, if he goes for Earthquake and go, go into, even go into my Lucario because that can take a max attack Earthquake or go into my Celebi of course. Seeing if he's locked into Earthquake, switches out, I can just go for Giga Drain or if he switches up moves, I know what his uh, set is. And he switches in one time into Rocks, you turns out with my Celebi or just switches out in general with my Celebi. Then he gets another round of Rocks and after two Rocks switch in, he is in range for an extreme speed from my Lucario. So if he goes into my Lodic in the other hand, knowing that this is how it will play out, I think he's most likely Scarf, because if he goes into Malotic, he can't just kill with my Yenna with a Scald, and then he can, poten can potentially win with his Infernape, even though it's Scarf, because then I would be forced to go into my Celebi. I could go for Giga Drain, basically we uh, wear down the... Um, what you call it? Wear down the... Um, uh, the um, I could go for Giga Drain, basically, on the Milotic. There we go, <laughs> now I can finally speak. Giga Drain on the Milotic, get a lot of health back, but he could switch in into his um, uh, Infernape on my Celebi, because after he's, he's already toxic, he saw U-turn, he saw recover. If he see Giga Drain, he knows my full set, and he knows that I can't touch the Infernape. He can just switch in the Infernape, go for U-turn versus my Celebi, kill that, go back into Milotic, and then it's Lucario versus the world. I would have to lock myself into close combat, and then Infernape can just kill me. So these are the scenarios which I see how this happens. If he goes into so if he goes into his um, Milotic, the Inferno is most likely Scarf, and I have to get Flabbit's record to kill him. So I get my leftovers back. I don't know if that made sense for you. I hope it does. <laughs> it made sense in my head. I hope it could, I could bring that to you. He does go into his Milotic. Does go into his Milotic. Very important play. So he does go into Milotic, gets some rocks damage. So right here. I just go. For, I just uh, sack my Magiana basically to the sc incoming skull because then I could, could go into my, um, like I said, into my Celebi. Get hopefully enough health back to the point where uh, I would not go for Giga Drain then versus the uh, Milotic. I would just spam recover because he has um, because if I'm at a good amount of health, if I'm be be uh, over seventy percent, 
U turn won't kill me from the Inferno. I would have to go for the fire move then. And if he goes for the fire move, he gets recall on himself, and then he's in extreme speed range, and then everything is Gucci. But seeing that, uh, he goes into uh, my Lurk. Of course, I just fire off an energy ball right here, just sacking my, my, my Janet. But he does I outspeed him. Why do I not speed him? There's only one, two scenarios in which I speed him. That is, he was predicting my Volt Switch and good to go for Miracle, or he was going for Dragon Tail. Seeing that I'm a fairy, tail, a fairy type, he definitely did go for the Miracle right here. So now, it's basically GG. Like, if he's Scarf Inferno, it's GG right here. There's nothing he can lock himself into. If he locks himself into close combat, or Flare Blitz killing my uh, Magena, he, he gets Recall or minus one on his uh, Inferno, gets another Rock Switch in. If he locks himself into U-Turn, he doesn't kill Magena. I get some damage on him, then I can go to Lucario and kill him off. If he locks himself into Earthquake, he can't kill my Celebi. I can get some damage off, and then he's in extreme speed range. Basically, if he's Scarf, it's GG right here. But like you can see here, he pulls off the Z move. And my heart sunk. I was like, damn, no, damn it, this, this damn Infernip can now, now I know it can switch up moves. Because of that crit versus Celebi, I was not able to see what, what kind of Infernip he is. I was assuming he is Scarf most of the time, but now the, the Z move, now that I see it, he kills my, uh, my Magiana, of course, and now he can just go for U turn on my Celebi because I know he can switch up moves, and then it's basically the GG. So, this would be a 1 0 win for John and the New Orleans Pelippers. If there wouldn't be another option. And I did not play for it, the game, barring now. That turn was basically there. I looked at another part of the screen and there was a red number right there. And the timer is very low. And you, oh, now you know what I'm talking about. Basically, if I just take, if I take all the time for this turn right here, I, uh, the timer's are down. Timer's down. And I will win 2-1 and one versus John. And that is exactly what I'm doing. I don't do my Celebi, and I take all the time of the turn, which is 90 seconds, and the time runs around, and the battle is over. And I won 2-1 and one versus John and the New Orleans Pelipers. Not a clean win. Let me wait till this image pops up. Yeah, not a very clean win. I'm not happy with that win and how it played out. If... Like, I did not, I, at least my defense, I could say I did not play for the timer. Most of the time, uh, John took longer for his turn. It was just a very long match in general. But, uh, it's, it's still, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like a real win. Like, after the match, what I did not thought about in the match, but after the match, uh, what I thought of, what I, another potential way to win the game would have been what was just going to Lucario first, forcing him to go for the close combat or the flare blitz to kill me. And, uh, but on that turn, switching into Celebi and basically get a recall at him or minus one and then kill him with extreme speed. Turns out, after the match, he was Fire Blast. He was a mixed Inferno with Fire Blast. So it were all, if I would have made this play, it would have all depended if he goes for Close Combat or Fire Blast on my Lucario, risking the Fire Blast miss or playing it safe. So I could have done that, and even if he would have gone for Fire Blast on my back switch in Celebi, I still could have timer stalled him and won 1-1, one, one, basically. So I should have done that, most likely, but yeah. It's the first time I win, I make the season, and I'm not very happy about it. And yeah, what else can I say? Uh, what else can I say? It's a time I win. I'm not happy about it. It happened. And I, I think in every recently season, I wouldn't have taken it. I would have just l letting John win. But seeing that I'm 3 and 4, very still very slim chance to get into the player spot, I... I was desperate enough to take this chance, and I, like I said, I do not feel happy enough about. I do not feel very happy about that. I hope it doesn't jeopardize John's playoff chances. Now I definitely want him still getting the playoffs. Like if that win costs John the playoffs, then I'm gonna be very mad at myself. But yeah, that's how the cookie crumbles. We take our win for a price I didn't want to pay, but uh, I was in the end forced because he was not a scarf in thirty. If I would have been now playing better around the Yuxi, then I most likely wouldn't have to come down to this. I had a very good chance of winning then if I didn't like if I didn't do this, these weird plays with my Ladias around the Yuxi. So I have to blame myself for being forced to do that. So yeah. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Like many many people, many coaches actually do take timer wins this season. I don't know if that did help as well in me be willing to take it, seeing that other coaches do that. I don't know really. But I mean, I can't, I can't deny that that's really effective. Like subconsciously, I was thinking, oh, time is not that bad. Many people are doing it. Could be a thing. Could be a thing. I can't really defend that. 
But yeah, very annoying win. It is a win still, so we're going 4-4 four and four into the next match versus Mudo 2, actually. The first rematch of the season we will be facing off against the Tampa Bay Lux race. So be excited for that. Definitely check out all the guys in the description. Definitely check out John, give him some love. Definitely check out uh, Greg, Redifin, Jim, and Burke. All the links will be in the description. And yeah, I will see you next week for the next match. 4-4 four four now, not with the cleanest of wins, but a win is a win, and we will definitely keep on getting clean wins from now on, and the, the only thing we can do now to honor this win, even though it was such a such an uh, unclean one, is to basically win the championship for John. <laughs> That's at least, in my opinion, the right thing to do right now. So I will see you next week. Ciao.